What's up guys, it's Drak, and today we're gonna to be talking about a half-length Nerf revolver. I'm stoked. So this is the Wrecked Jury. This just showed up from my friends over at Umarex. They also make Elite Force Airsoft, which is what I use whenever I go play uh, Airsoft. I, uh, I really dig the concept of a half-length revolver. I've wanted a half-length revolver for a really long time, and while it's no secret that the first couple generations of the Wrecked Blasters didn't really deliver on the, I guess, hope that introducing CO2 into the nerfing market would like give something unique to the space. We had a pistol that was single shot that didn't fire very hard and a rifle that had some issues and still required manual pump action to chamber and what have you. That said, this one seems to be relatively unique. It's a new concept. I'm excited to give it a shot. On the back here, we've got realistic hammer action, CO2 power, on-off safety, and then a removable rotating dart cylinder. So effectively, this looks to be very, very similar to the Umarex Hater platform, which in a world where, you know, there aren't a ton of amazing airsoft revolvers, that is one of the better ones. So as we open up the package, it looks like we get a spare cylinder, which is pretty sweet, a thing of darts, and the pistol itself, along with some instructions and a sticker. I wish the sticker was a patch so I could throw it on the wall behind me. So. Let's uh, go ahead, pop this off of its cardboard plate. They do come in two team colors. You've got team red and team blue. We're gonna be doing the team red one because it's obviously better. So as we look at the jury, a few controls become obvious. We've got single and double action over here, I think. I think, I know the original hater is single and the double. Down here, we've got a notch. That notch in here is gonna kind of allow us to see the CO2 cartridge inside. And then over here, we have this knob, which lets us, well, Exactly that. So the knob comes up and clicks like that, retracting the pin that holds the cylinder in place. You put it down like that and it pops into place exactly like so. You appear to have some sort of like burst disc up here where you'll deliver air and then a relatively sealed barrel to cylinder chamber. It's hard to say. The back here has a metal disc for rotating all of that sweet, sweet wheel gun action. The darts that it comes with are maybe the weakest point of the product. The darts are what appear to be cut down Vowberries. If you guys know anything about aftermarket Nerf darts, you would know the, the Vowberries are the hard tips for something that's CO2 powered. I feel like having a rock hard tip on your cut down Vowberry is probably not where you wanna be. All the same, for testing purposes, we're gonna load them into the cylinder, see what we've got. For outdoor segments where we get some FPS readings, we'll try both their darts in a cylinder, and then we'll try some, uh, some more advanced dart technology. But getting this into place should be as simple as clicking this up, kind of aligning it, clicking down, and it appears that we're good to go. Now, uh, the only CO2 that I could find was these Crossman 12 grams, but that's what this takes. Pretty standard to use a 12 gram for a pistol like this, and you should get quite a few shots out of the product. I'm looking at the blue one right now. I don't necessarily know if it tells you how many shots you're gonna get off of the CO2 power, but you should be good for at least your first 20, 25 shots or so before you start running out of juice and need to change over. It appears that this notch here allows us to kind of pop this off. It looks like it's held in with a, an offset, and then you've got a lot of sort of pop metal standoffs in here. Oh, the offset is specifically your tool to, that's clever. The offset becomes the Allen key so that you can unscrew this, put this in, screw this up. I guess just twist until you hear. Okay, so I just heard a very gentle noise, which tells me that we've engaged the cylinder. I'm not going to over tighten it. You can see there that that's how the tool works. It's kind of set into glued into the molded plastic there. I'm assuming that means that then I just come in like this, click that there. This should snap right into place. Ding. All right, so we've got air in here effectively. This is our safety, so safety down, no trigger action whatsoever. Uh, the trigger and the hammer are both plastic. Would have been nice to see those in metal, but the product is not particularly expensive for something in this category. So once you click off that safety, like so, uh, like I said, you have single or double action. That's going to hit a burst valve back there. I'm not entirely sure it's going to be visible, but it should look very familiar if you've used CO2 uh, before. And then 
Uh, I don't think there's a decocker, so we're pretty locked in now to at least uh, firing once. How loud is this going to be? Jinx, stand by. It's not that loud. And it actually gave a very satisfying little pop. Now, like I said, uh, you could do two actions in one. Uh, a longer trigger pull. I love it. CO2 makes it more expensive to run this as a practical sidearm, but as a competitive sidearm, do you even care about CO2? You just want six good shots out of it. $60 for a pistol is a little pricey, but it's certainly unique. It's a semi-auto wheel gun, um, and uh, it feels good. I mean, it's got a great grip profile. It's holsterable, certainly. And uh, it is starting to get cold, ratcheting through that quickly. Dropping the cylinder should be as easy as just popping it out. I've got some of the max starts here, some of the best starts in the business. Not that I'm biased at all, they just happen to be drac colors as well, which is sweet. And by being, they're actually, this is kind of funny, uh, they, they match the rec jury as well. The jury is kind of like gray hardware in its trigger and hammer. But I want to know how well it fires these. They're slightly longer than the ones that they're including, the little Vowberries. But again, I would be using this as like some sort of competitive setup. And by making a competitive setup out of it, I feel like I don't really care. Uh, if I have to shave down some darts or make like match grade ammo for it or something like that, that just clicked into place and rotated fine. Makes the trigger pull a little stiffer to have the longer darts in there, but. Let's take it outside. So we're out here with the judge and it's actually got some terrific weight to it. The overall kind of size and profile of it makes it fun to spin, the safety makes it safe to spin, and I mean, it would holster very nicely, uh, whether you have dump pouch pockets or, or any sort of, <laughs> I have to take my phone and my audio mic out to show you guys that, uh, that it's, it's a pretty comfortable sort of tactical situation kind of fit and finish there. It also draws cleanly and you can easily click off that safety. I actually really like the control suite for it. Now, as far as the performance goes, these are the darts it came with. Let's go ahead and load that up in there, drop that down like so, take the safety off, and then click like so. Uh, we'll put a few over the chronograph, and 128 isn't bad. 131 is pretty slick. 145, 122, 124, 115. Now, whether or not this is going to be allowed on a college campus or something like that is up for debate, but uh, if you could find a way to get all of the shots under 130, this would be a really sweet zombie sidearm. Now, in terms of its competitive potential, if it's getting 130, 145, et cetera, that is a great last ditch sidearm, particularly since it is semi-auto. I've gone ahead and I actually didn't mention it explicitly, but this has been loaded up with the max darts. I wanna get chronograph reading on the max darts, and specifically, you have to be very purposeful about how you seat these. Otherwise, the rubber heads interact with the seal up front, and they give you, uh, it'll still work, but it's harder to rotate through, particularly if you're firing single action. But uh, let's go ahead and 138, 123, 115, 125, 120, 145. So the overall, and you can deprime it, you just have to be very careful as you release that down without hitting that burst disc in the back there. Now, overall, I think that this thing is sweet. I really like this style of blaster in terms of its uh it's just overall performance i like revolvers i like the reliability of them i like you know all of the the kind of hero prop action that you get out of them and most importantly i like that it's a i'm trying to think if there's any other semi-auto sidearm this compact i mean i guess you could use a pew pew but the pew pew needs a magazine to get this kind of numbers out of a sidearm reliably you usually have to go to something lipo powered and the lipo stuff tends to be a little fickle. So far, I haven't had any failure to feeds or failure to fires. We've got one more of each. This is the darts it came with. This is my, uh, my pro darts. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fire them at a target down range here. The only concern that I have, and it maybe just is the nature of CO2, is the variability with which we're having uh, our FPS readings. But for right now, we'll go ahead and close that in. I do wanna point out that topping it off through this slide is fine. It would be great if you were using this as like a primary on a field or something, but I really think that where this shines is on a drop leg holster, whether you have, you know, built-in molly to do that or not is up to you, but in a drop leg holster, you could use this as your, your backup.
in like a competitive game, say your talent claw failed, you would still have six darts to possibly win your 1v1 so that your five on five still maths out correctly. Anyway, this target is far away. I wanna see how accurate it's gonna be on target. This is a box. A box is not a man-sized target. The box is, you know, 12 inch by 12 inch by 12 inch, and it's sitting there at about 25 feet just over the fence. Let's see what we're up against. I put the safety back on. Hey, that's pretty good. Ironically, the first shot uh, was the best one. Once you've clicked in, the cylinder is locked. So the one where I like half pulled there, it, uh, it did not do what I needed it to do. But it seems like they're very straight. That was probably a weird jump cut. We won't worry about it. Um, we do have this cylinder over here. The cylinder has our max darts in it. Click that into place, ratchet that down, safety off. And uh, we're really gonna try. We're gonna dial it in and see if we can hit the box. We're just kind of free shooting last time. I definitely think that the performance would work for the scenarios that I've described, but I wanna know just how on target we could be if we line up the sights. It definitely seems close. I don't know if you would ever want to use it for marksman stuff. At this point, I've put about 100 shots through this, which is sort of ridiculous, but I've done a bunch of TikTok shots between the jump cut, and I've probably put maybe not 100, maybe 60, about 10 cylinders through, and we're still, we're still getting air through it. I think that it's definitely safe to say that we've lost a good amount of pressure. Uh, for competition scenarios, I would use something uh, fresh. I do just want to point out, I thought that this was plastic earlier. The controls are metal. It's just anodized to be the same color as the cylinder, which is an interesting choice, but everything about this is, uh, is die cast. The overall performance of this is quite good. I think that the bright colors in the form of red and orange still make them very clearly toy-esque. Overall, I think this is a solid pickup, which is crazy because it's a night and day difference than, you know, the single shot, like four actions to load. Pistol, I definitely like this much, much more than that, the uh, the Walther inspired kind of dealio. And I'm just kind of thrilled to see this implemented. We did not have a half length wheel gun uh, prior to this, but it's got good tactile feel. It's got good kind of like range shooting, like target shooting sort of applications. And I think that it might even have a place in competitive if your competitive allows HPA, CO2, compressed air, et cetera, which I do just want to be clear, currently the rules for the, uh, the Foam Pro Tour do not, but it'd be interesting to see how this is implemented, how safe it is over time, what failures look like. We should put this through, uh, through its paces, but definitely a lot of merits to the system in general. I wonder. Yeah, I mean, it's getting a lot out of its CO2 canister, certainly. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think of this down in the description box below. I don't have a, a Raid Shadow Legends ad to joke about this time. So I just think that it's, it's pretty compelling, pretty cool in its own right. Much love, blast on, track out. Uh -huh.